Hey guys, James here from Me Bass Guitar, and in today's bass guitar lesson, I'm gonna show you how to start approaching playing the legendary Herbie Hancock tune, Watermelon Man. If you're a beginner to intermediate bass guitar player and just starting out playing jazz, make sure you check out this lesson all the way to the end. <laughs> Hey guys, it's James here from ebassguitar.com and in today's bass guitar lesson I'm going to show you how to approach playing the legendary Herbie Hancock tune Watermelon Man. If you're in the early phases of playing jazz or you want to go and play the jazz jam session, this is one of a pair of tunes that you're likely to see. The other track is called Cantaloupe Island which we'll be covering next on this YouTube channel. So these two tunes are where the worlds of jazz and rock or rock and roll started colliding in the early 60s. So if you played blues or rock or country before these two tunes are a great place to start getting into jazz so first of all let me show you what we're going to be covering One, today two, three four. Guys, just before we hit the lesson content today, I want you to know there's a completely free PDF which comes with this lesson where you can see everything we're discussing today written out in standard notation and tab. There is a link in the description below where you can grab your copy. Also, if you want to grab the backing track which comes with this lesson, this is available as part of the Jazz Jam Backing Track Album Volume 1. This is 12 world-class backing tracks which will give you all of the core tunes that you need to know to go and play a Jazz Jam session wherever you are in the world. You can grab your copy of the Jazz Jam Backing Track Album by jumping over to ebassguitar.com and checking out the products menu there. So Watermelon Man is effectively a blues sequence which which uses three chords. And those three chords are F7, B flat seven, and C7 in the key of F. So the difference between this and your standard 12 bar blues is it's either a 16 bar blues or an 18 bar blues. So the sequence has been elongated slightly. So today we're gonna to be looking at the 18 bar blues version of this. And what I'm gonna to do to begin with is break this down into two core grooves which are played throughout this tune and simplify them so you know what the core elements of them are. So the first groove is literally this. which is the root and the fifth. So the root and the fifth in F is just gonna be an F and a C. So we play the F on the first beat of the bar for two beats, one, two, and then we just go three and like that. So two eighth notes on beat three of the bar. So we end up with this. And we play this for four bars. Then we take that shape up into B flat by just moving it down the string. And then back to F7 for two bars. And that is exactly the same as the regular 12 bar blues. Now this is where it changes. So we hit chord five here, which is the C like so, but the groove changes very slightly. And what we do is we do this pushed thing, which sounds like this. So one, two, and three, four, one, two, and three, four, like that. So that is a note on beat one of the bar. And then the second note is played on beat two and. So one, two, and three, four, one, two, and. But what we do is we repeat that pattern like so. So let me play it to you. So this is bars nine to 18 now. So this is one, two, and three, four, one, two, and three, four, and then up again to bar chord five again, chord four again, and then chord five again, and then a stop on the third time. So we play chord five and chord four 
three times, but on the third time there is a stop. Now, to finish the sequence off, we go back to the original groove, which is And what most people do when I play this on the gig on the gigs is play this for four bars. But what you will find is that sometimes people play it for two bars, so the sequence effectively becomes 16 bars. But I've most commonly seen this as an 18 bar blues because four bars at the end feels just that little bit more natural. So I'm gonna play the whole sequence through now by myself with both grooves in there. And then I'm gonna play it with a backing track so you can hear it in context. So one, two, three, bam. stop and then four bars of the original groove on F. And that is the complete sequence which we're going to be using for the One, rest of this two, lesson. Three, four. there is break the groove and the sequence down into its bare bones. Now if you listen to the original track from 1962 there are some really cool passing notes or approach notes in there so you'll probably hear this groove going on. So what I'm going to do now is explain how to create that groove and make it work through all of the chord changes. So this passing note or approach note is on beat four of the bar. And I like to think of it as a chromatic approach note to the chord that we're going to. So let me explain. So if I play this in F now, we have this. And then the next chord is an F again. So what we're going to do is we're going to approach that from half a step below on beat four. So that means we're going to use the open E. And that creates a really cool riff in itself. But what we need to do is make that approach note work when we're changing chords. So when we are going to the B flat on bar five, we need to approach it from half a step below, which is going to be the open A like this, like that. So if I go from bars four to bars five on those chord changes, it will sound like this. And then when I change back to the F, I'm going to approach the F from half a step below. So let me play you those first eight bars so you can hear what they sound like. Then we hit chord five there, which is the C. So we're gonna approach that from half a step below, which is going to be the B natural here. So then when we hit this next groove, we end up with this idea. And it's really great to put a chromatic passing note between those two chords using the B natural. So when we hit the B flat chord, we're approaching from half a step below, up above rather, like that. And when we're hitting the C, we're approaching from half a step below. 
like that. So we end up with just using the B flat as a, or the B natural rather, as a transition note. that and then we hit the stop like that so that is a really nice thing to add to our sequence then we just go back into the original groove for the last four bars so what we've done now is we've built up a really up a really great bass line which will work across the whole of the sequence which has those chromatic approach notes which starts taking it to up to that next level so let me show you what this sounds like One, in context two, three four Guys, if you're enjoying this lesson and you're looking to push your bass playing onto the next stage, make sure you jump over to ebassguitar.com and check out the Bass Lab Plus. The Bass Lab Plus is a full step-by-step -step program designed especially for the beginner to intermediate bass player, which gives you all of the skills you need to rock out at home, join the worship team, play at a jam session, or even join your very first band. You can join free today with a 14 day trial. There is a link in the description below. So to finish off this lesson, I wanna give you a taste of where this tune can go because Watermelon Man is a super versatile tune and there's so much space to have fun and get creative. So I wanna show you a concept that I call the four power notes because this is great to start improvising over this tune. The four power notes or the box shape as you may have heard or seen it called before is the root, the fifth, the flattened seventh and the octave and it creates this box shape on the neck like that and it's great to start improvising on this tune. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the flattened seventh and the octave in on beat four throughout the whole of this tune. So this will end up with this bass line here. So. So we are literally doing two beats on the F and then we have two eighth notes on the C. And then on the last two eighth notes of the bar, we're gonna go from the E flat to the F like that. And we can put that throughout the whole sequence. Then up to the B flat. And then what I would do is when we get to the pushed part, when we go to chord five, is I would push into the second note. And then on beat four, is put the B flat to the C like that, which is the flattened seventh to the octave as a little fill. So you end up with this. Like that with the stop on beat one of the bar, then back to the original groove. So try that first of all to begin with, but I can't resist pushing this on a stage again because there's this really cool idea that I hear all of the time in this track, and that is to put a chromatic approach note to the fifth. Don't worry, I'm gonna write all of this out in the PDF which comes with the lesson. So on beat two and of the bar, what I want you to do is play a B natural and then hammer on or just play the note to hit the C on the third beat of the bar. So this is on the F7 chord. So we end up with this one, two, and three. One, two. So we get that really chromatic, juicy B natural to the C like that, which gives it that slightly jazzy flavor, which sounds really cool. Then we can put that throughout the whole of the sequence using the F and the B flat chords. So there is so 
much fun you can have. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna play you these ideas that I've just shown you with the backing track. Then I'm gonna start breaking out a little bit to show you where these ideas One, can two, go. One, two, three, four. Guys, that's the end of today's bass guitar lesson. If you've enjoyed the lesson, make sure you download the completely free PDF where you can see everything we've discussed today written out in standard notation and tab. There's a link in the description below. Also, if you're looking to push your bass guitar playing forward, make sure you jump over to ebassguitar.com where there's an easy to understand step-by-step -step syllabus designed especially for the beginner to intermediate bass guitar player. You can join free today with a 14-day trial. Again, there's a link in the description below. Cheers. I've been James from eBay's Guitar. I'll catch you next time.